In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a particular type of colouring book to publish on Amazon via the KDP platform that's both easy and cheap to create and is very popular and therefore profitable. So if you're in the market to get into self-publishing and create your own book to publish on Amazon, then follow along as I show you how. Now, if you've not been to this channel before, then welcome. My name's Paul Miles. And I do videos on how to make it, to keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. And if you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell to receive notification of when I produce more videos like this. So what type of colouring book are we looking at today? Well, it's the short phrase, quotes, motivational quotes, affirmations. There's many different types, but it's those types of colouring book we're looking at. And as I mentioned earlier, they're very popular indeed. In fact, if we go over to Amazon and have a look at some examples, we can see here, I've put in affirmation coloring books into the search bar and there are plenty available. It says here there are 1000 search results, which if you've seen any of my videos on niche, niche research before, you'll know that that's not too competitive. So if we scroll down and have a look, we've got this one here with a bestsellers rank of 832, which is very low. And if we put this into a book sales calculator, we can see that it's selling between 2,500 and 5,000 a month, which at a selling price of $6.99 gives it a profit of about $1.90, which equates to a monthly income of 4,750 to $9,500 a month, which if we look at the top end, equates to about $316 a day of pure profit. Now I know these figures do <laughs> trigger some people. Um, they say, oh, you know, it's a scam. It's impossible to make this sort of money and, you know, I'm giving everybody false hopes. But I've said before, these books are created by people like you and me. And so if they can do it, so can you. And if we scroll down, you know, there's lots of examples of these types of books with low bestsellers ranks. Here's one, 2,113. There's, there's lows, 14,140 uh, is another one, 7,000. These are all selling well. Now, if we just take a quick look um, inside this particular book, we can see here that the pages, the interior are quite basic. We've basically got this quote here on a patent background. And that's what I like about these particular type of books. You don't need great artistic skills because you don't need to be drawing or creating images or outsourcing um, images at sort of great expense to create these sorts of interiors. Uh, and the method I'll show you is relatively simple and is very effective. Now let's just have a look at some different types of, of books on Amazon. So here I've put in the search term quotes coloring book. And again, we've got lots of examples. If we scroll down, uh, another good search term or type are Psalm coloring books. Now these are quotes or short phrases from the Bible. And when I saw this, I started to think, well, could you do similar coloring books with quotes from other religious texts? There's an idea for you. And another popular one are, and I do apologize if <laughs> this offends anyone, but swear word coloring books. But I have to show you these because these are insanely popular and profitable. Here's one with an extremely low bestsellers rank of 181. That means it's the 181st bestselling book on amazon.com in the US as a whole. So that's pretty good. And all these have got very low bestsellers ranks. Now, when I was thinking of different sub niches within this or different types of books, um, I thought about things like maybe quotes, saying short phrases related to professions or, or sports or, or hobbies, just ideas for you to do your own research on Amazon to see if there is a market for those type of books. If there wasn't, and you can create these easily, you may want to think about just experimenting and trying with those different sorts of niches. But those were the basic ones I found, affirmations, you know, funny quotes, motivational quotes, psalms, you know, quotes from religious texts, and swear words. So I'm going to show you this in three steps, which is getting the quotes, finding your fonts, and then putting it all together to create a nice cohesive coloring book. So in terms of getting quotes, you can go over to Google and just put in funny quotes, look at images, 
and you've got all these here. Now, as I put in here funny quotes, but you could put in motivational quotes, etc. One of my favorite sites is Pinterest. Again, I, this time I put in motivational quotes and we've got all these options that are available. And I find Pinterest one of the best sources for things like quotes. One of the other sources, you could go to a site like Redbubble where people um, create merch, create t-shirts, etc. And again, all I've done here is put in quote and you've got all these ideas for different quite types of quotes that are currently popular and trending on Redbubble. You can also search for trending and best selling like these here. Again, they're just examples. Now, a common and Good question I often get asked is what's the issue with trademark and copyright around using these quotes and phrases that you find on the internet? Well, in general, and I say in general, quotes can't be um, copyrighted. That is short phrases and quotes can't be copyrighted. However, there is a caveat to that in a moment. However, they can be trademarked. So what I suggest you do, first of all, is if you find something you want to use, is go over to the USPTO.gov website and search, just put in here the, the quote or phrase that you're, you're searching for. Here I've pushed, put just do it. Now I don't want to search all terms, I just want to search the exact phrase and I'll submit query. And I will be almost certain that this is trademarked by Nike. And if we go down here, we can see here, we've got just do it. You just click on the live and it will tell you, there we go, it's trademarked by Nike. So you don't want to be using that. You can go over to the equivalent site in the UK and that is .gov.uk slash search for trademark and do the same sort of search. And you could do a Google search for um, trademark searches in any other countries, markets that you're thinking of publishing in. Now I said there was a caveat to the issue with re regards copyright and short phrases. Now I've done my reading and I'm gonna give you a link to this document here which explains about copyright. If the particular phrase conjures up a, a particular image or maybe a product. Uh, an example given is the phrase ET phone home. Now I've not checked that for trademark, but if it wasn't trademarked, you may go, okay, that's fine. I can use it because you can't in general copyright a phrase. However, they say that if it conjures up a specific image um, of something in particular, then that could well be copyrighted and ET phone home conjures up the, the images or, or the film uh, E.T. that was published, uh, which was created many years ago in the 80s. So in that respect, that particular phrase would be copyrighted. So it is a bit of a gray area. Now, what I suggest doing is if you do have a phrase and you feel you really must use it, but you're not sure, then my suggestion is consult a copyright lawyer. So now we've picked our quote or you pick some quotes, we want some good fonts. Now in general, um, a lot of these coloring books use script or handwriting type fonts. Now, what you can do is go to Google and just search for free fonts. And you've got these websites here. Now, what you need to make sure is when you pick a font is that you have commercial uh, use. Now, some fonts you may find are, are in the public domain, uh, such as this one here, but you'll find that others are free only for commercial use like this one here and in which case you would have to buy the commercial license. Now, if you're using things like Adobe Illustrator, um, you'll find that the fonts there you can use. And I think that's the same for you know fonts you find on Microsoft Word. You can use those commercially. If you're worried about commercial licenses and you want to pick a, a font that's not on Adobe or, or Microsoft, then a good place, and this is a resource I use, is Creative Fabrica, because then you know you've got the commercial license to use these. And I just searched for script font, and we've got pages and pages of options. Now, Creative Fabrica will also be useful for the, the pattern background that we're gonna be using later. But you can find similar sites that, that provide these different graphics and fonts, things like Design Bundles is another website I've used. But Creative Fabrica, I do have a, um, an account uh, with these, as I've had for nearly a year and are great for fonts, graphics, and, and uh, also KDP interiors. I'll leave the link to it down below. Now, if you really wanted to splash out and get something bespoke, you could go over to fiverr.com, and I put in here phrase coloring book, and there are people that will create your interiors for you with quotes on various backgrounds. And here's one I saw, which I quite like the look of. This is sort of a doodle style coloring book with a quote in the middle, and 
they say they'll create a basic page for six, uh, says here, six Australian dollars, 74 cents, because I'm in Australia. However, if you wanted this for commercial use, because you can see this is not ticked there, um, it would cost 20 Australian dollars, which is about, I think, around about 15 US dollars. So if you're doing a 60 page coloring book, you'd need uh, about 30 images, because often you have a blank page because of bleed of, of of coloring pens going through the page so 30 at that price you're looking at around about 450 us dollars um, which would obviously save you a lot of time doing it yourself and it's the same with a lot of these uh, creations of, of books any type of book you can take pay for shortcuts and so you pay the money but it will save you time but there are free options available it just takes your time and what i'm going to show you now is a free option now the software to use to create these interiors needs to be vector editing software. I'm gonna be using Affinity Designer today. Other software is Adobe Illustrator. Free versions are Inkscape and Gravit Designer. Now, Gravit Designer only has basic functions in the free version. If you wanted extra functions, you'd have to pay for the pro version. What I'm gonna show you today, you can easily do in the, in the free basic version. So let's open Affinity Designer. Now, this is just a basic quote I'm going to be using today. Create a life you love. Now, this is just in a basic Arial font. So, first of all, I'm going to put a bounding box around all these words, and we're going to change the font to Brush Script. Now, they're not really aligned in the center, so again, another bounding box around all the words. Click on this box at the top, or wherever it is on whatever software you're using, and just click align horizontally. Now, we want people to be able to color in these letters. So again, another bounding box around all the letters. Now, up here in the top right-hand corner, we have options for stroke, and we have options for fill color. Again, you'll have similar options on whatever software you use. So we want our fill color to be white, so I'm going to move this slider over. Now you'll see our words disappear. And we want our stroke to be black. So I'm just going to click, uh, move our slider along to black. Now you can see we've got our outlined words. Now you can adjust the size of the stroke. You can make it really thick, that's no good, or really thin, so it almost disappears. I'm just going to set this at three for the moment because I think that will work well. Now what we need next is a background. So I'm just going to go back to Creative Fabrica. I put in um, floral patterns, and we've got these here, which are actually designed for coloring book pages. So if I click on this option and just click on download, now you'll notice we've got full print on demand usage allowed, so we can use these in books. So I've downloaded that, go back to Affinity Designer, and from wherever it's downloaded, you just drag that onto the page. And we're gonna move that into position and just holding down Command or Control. I'm just going to drag that so it covers the page. Now that's covering our letters, so on the right hand side where we have our layers box, I'm just going to drag that to the bottom. So now we have our words over our patterned background. This looks okay, but it does look a bit messy, so we're going to create an effect which I think you'll like. So for the moment I'm just going to switch off, I'm just going to click this tick here just to switch off our coloured background. Now I'm going to highlight all our words again, or put a bounding box around it. And I'm going to click on Command C or Control C to copy, and then Command C or Control V to paste. And then I want to group all the, the layers together in this particular layer. So I'm going to click on Command G or Control G to group. Now I'm going to get just untick all the, the layers of our letters, uh, like so. And this leaves our group. Here. Now what we want to do is click on our color box. We want our fill this time to be black. So I'm just going to click on the black. Now we go over to the stroke tab and we're going to increase our stroke size. And you can see it gets larger and larger and eventually all joins together like so. I'm just going to reduce that ever so slightly like so. Next thing is Command C or Control C to copy and again Command V Control V to paste. Now, make sure you've got the top layer highlighted. So that's the bottom layer, and we've got the top layer highlighted. We're going to make the stroke color white. Let's move our slider across. Now, what we need to do is to drag those two layers that we've grouped together to just above our patterned background layer, like so. And then what we can do is turn back on the layers that contain our words. And then we can switch back on our background image. 
And you can see here now, that's already looking a bit better. So what we need to do next is just click on the layer that highlights our black contoured background. And you can see there'll be a bounding box around it. So what you do is put your mouse over there, click and just drag. Now you can see what happens. You can move this any way you want, but if you position it just down and to the right, you can drag this into position. And I'll do that just a bit more like so to create a nice 3D effect, which I think you'll agree looks pretty good. Now, what I should have mentioned earlier is the size of the page. Now you can see that the pattern goes right to the edge of the page. So this page is going to have bleed. Now, one of the most common sizes for coloring books is 8.5 by 11 inches. So we want to create a page size with bleed. So that would actually be 8.625 inches by 11.25 inches. So what do we do with this now? Well, we want to create the interior of our book. Now you can do this in programs like InDesign or Adobe InDesign and Affinity Publisher. I've actually done all mine in Keynote and some also in uh, PowerPoint because I find this really easy and has always worked for me, no problem. So as I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna go to Keynote and we've got our blank page here. Now, again, this is 8.625 inches by 11.25 inches. With Keynote, you have to convert that to points. On PowerNote, you can just create the page size from those dimensions itself. Now we've got our first page here, which is blank. Now I'm just gonna copy that page and just paste. I'm gonna create just four pages. Now you could keep going if you want to create all the pages for your coloring book. In this case, you know, it could be 60 pages. So we could go all the way down to 60. So we go back up to the first page. Now what we do is go back to Affinity Designer, put a bounding box round all our document and then just copy, go back over to Keynote and just paste. Now, for some reason, and I cannot work this out, it's leaving a tiny little white border at the top. So if you find this happens, it's no problem. Using the arrow keys or just drag, you can move that up to the top and then just increase the size like so. And there we've got our first page. Now, the second page, which is the page behind this one, um, I normally leave blank. Some people do do these black, so make them all black. I don't like that because often when it gets printed out, it doesn't look right. You can often sometimes see very fine little lines down there. And I don't think it looks very professional, but that is an option if you choose to do it. I just leave it blank and white. So the next page you create the image on would be page three. So you can go through the same process as I've done, use a different pattern, um, use a, obviously a different quote, but you can create that nice effect that we can see here which if we go back to our earlier example of the coloring book looks very similar to this this looks more like a, a hand-drawn pattern background again you can find those type of backgrounds on something like creative fabrica or designbundles.net and the other thing is i use the same font here to for people to color in you could use a different font um, for some of the words like in this example here they've used a script type font with a what's called a sans serif font and they've used two different sizes so you could mix up the the different fonts and different sizes all within the same um, image i would suggest probably not using more than two fonts unless you really are a, an expert in in using these type of fonts it's not an area of my expertise there are books published on amazon if you want to learn more about that so once you've filled in all these alternate pages with your images you then save that as a pdf and then that will be ready to directly upload to the kdp platform now if this does spark your interest and you want to learn more about how to create other different types of coloring book interiors then watch this video next where i show you how i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you you do hit the subscribe button thank you very much for your time it's very much appreciated and until next time, goodbye.